So we're going to have a look now at what are called smart layers. Okay, so let me just explain a little bit what a smart layer actually is and what the benefits of using them are. So let me just go. I've got my layer here. Okay, my flower layer, and um, we've done a bit of transformation, transforming. Sorry earlier. Um, so basically, if I grab that layer, okay, hold down my shift key, scale it right down, press my enter key just to confirm that. That's fine, I've rescaled it down, but the problem is, what at this moment, what Photoshop does is forget all the information of when this flower was bigger. Okay, so what's going to happen now is if I change my mind, I want to scale it back up again. Hold down my shift key, scale it up, and you can see visibly how Photoshop has lost the quality. Okay, so really it's only increasing the size of the pixels of when it was smaller. So, I'm going to go back in my history panel now. Okay. Just go back to when I came to this point here. So this is the maximum size of this flower. Okay, so what I'm going to do is convert this into a smart layer. And what Photoshop will then do is remember all the information, all the pixel information, all the resolution of it when it was at this maximum size. Okay, so when I reduce it down, it still remembers all the pixels size of when it was bigger. So I can scale it up and down and you don't lose any quality. Okay, so it's a dead simple maneuver to do, and it just really does help us um, when we're certainly when we're designing things like this. We're going to be doing a lot of moving around, and again, makes things a bit more non-destructive. Things that I keep mentioning here. So, there's a couple of ways I can do it. The easiest way I find really is choose the layer, right-click on that layer, and you've got an option here to convert to smart object. Okay, another way of doing it is up into my layer option at the top here. I can go down to smart objects and convert to smart object okay but really probably the easiest way is right click on that layer convert to smart object okay and what we can see now very small in the corner of my little layers palette here there's a little icon okay so nothing's changed on my on my actual visual but i can see i've got this little smart object icon in the corner of my layers layer thumbnail here right so this time let's scale this down Okay, press enter, scale it back up again, and you can see I've not lost any quality because it remembers the maximum size that it was. Now we do have slight limitations with smart layers, as in what Photoshop won't let us do is actually edit the pixels. So it's got them fixed at the minute, it's got them fixed in this smart object. So if I, for example, go to my eraser tool and try to erase part, you can see a little no, not going to happen basically, this little icon here. If I click and drag, it says this smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. So what this means is I've got to undo it from being a smart object. Okay, so in rasterization, what that means is turning it back into editable pixels. Okay, so it's a bit confusing. Raster means pixels. Okay, um, so if you ever see this and you want to edit it, if I click OK, you can see that little smart icon is removed. But what we try to do really, we can keep them as smart objects as long as we can. So in theory, you know, I've done all the cutting out of this flower. I've done some, um, cut it out exactly how I want it to be. So there's not much I want to edit of the pixels at the minute. So I can turn this into a smart object and probably keep it as a smart object for quite some time. So let's do this. Let's do it on all these layers actually. So right click, convert to smart object, right click, smart object, and again there. Okay, so all these layers, and now smart objects, so I can scale them up and down, and it will remember this maximum quality. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm just going to show you another way I can put some layer effects on now as well, because now I've got all these here as smart objects. Let's make a new group. Click on my little group icon. Press Shift. Stick these all in there. Okay, so they're all in this group. Let's call this group flowers. Okay, so this is another way of doing kind of what I did in the last last video really with the layer effects. But what I can do is apply the layer effects to the whole group at the same time. So I've got them all as smart objects. Okay, so this is really good practice at um, how we keep things in this sort of uh, non-destructive way. Okay, let's just double click on the icon here. Look, so this time I can apply the drop shadow as I did before. Okay, um, let's just put a stroke on again. Again, these could be any effects that we're applying, really. I'm just trying to do something for to show you how it works. Click OK. 
apply any of these layer styles like I did in the last video. Click OK here. Now you can see the effects are basically being applied to the whole group. So as I toggle that down, I've got all the different flowers as smart objects. Okay, and then I've applied the effects to the group. So you can see it applies to everything within that group. Okay, so now I can move it all around as a tie group. I can scale it up and down. Okay, and this is a really good way of working in a non-destructive manner. Okay, so I'm reducing the size down, but I'm not losing any pixel information. The quality is still remembers the quality of these images at maximum size. And again, all these effects are just applied to the whole group, and they're just attached to that group again. Okay, so smart layers, converting them is a really useful way, particularly when you're doing a bit of design work, you're scaling things up and down, just to remember the maximum quality of those images.